Believe it or not, dog bones are more interesting than your dog believes them to be. And while these two fight it out, let's see why we created the dog bone in the first place. Let's take a look at the mechanical properties of polymers. Polymers can be classed as thermosetting or thermoplastic. Thermoplastic polymers melt at high temperatures, and this is how a typical FDM, or fused deposition modeling, 3D printer works. The printer melts the plastic and reforms it into another shape. However, in this video, we're interested in a different type of 3D printing, the type that uses UV curable polymers instead. One example being DLP, or direct light processing. When these photosensitive polymers cure, they tend to behave as a thermoset. Thermosets are polymers which have a network of interlinked chains. We refer to this interlinked network as being cured or cross-linked. These are typically not soluble and do not melt and flow when heated, like the paint on your car. We might then ask, how do thermosets differ in their stress and strain behavior from thermoplastics? To find that out, we compare two different thermosets, a 3D printed bottle opener, which is hard, rigid, and strong, and a 3D printed gasket, which is soft and flexible. How do we do this comparison, and more importantly, measure it? We use something called a tensile tester. With this device, we can pull the material apart at a given strain and measure the stress, or resistance, in force per unit area of the test material to that strain or deformation. But before we can do this, we need to use our UV photopolymer materials to 3D print dog bones. They aren't for the dog. We need to pull these specifically designed test pieces apart with our tensile tester. Now, with our test dog bones in the tensile tester, we slowly pull them apart. In the graph on the left, we have the tough hard bottle opener polymer, and in the graph on the right, we have the soft rubber-like gasket material. Notice how the rubber-like polymer stretches out, that being the distance along the x-axis, and see how that graph differs from the tough hard polymer in the graph on the left. Eventually, we pull the test dog bones both so far apart that they break, and we observe that the two graphs are very different. The shape of the graph now allows us to categorize our materials by the different properties that we can see, and we can also give some more scientific names to the important properties that we observe from our tensile test. From the different curves, we can then calculate various parameters. The E modulus is here, the yield strength and ultimate strength here and here. We can also calculate the elongation, how much the product has stretched, as this is the strain at the fracture expressed as a percentage. One final value we can easily calculate is the toughness of the product. This is simply the area under the curve. So now we can describe the polymer's properties more scientifically and with values rather than with qualitative labels like stiff, hard, soft, or brittle. Now we can talk about E modulus, tensile strength, elongation, etc. These values can now be used to choose which of our commercial products are most suitable to achieve specific properties of a printed part. Those products can be optimized for your application through formulation and testing, and can be found in the RON product guide and 3D printing lab report. Alternatively, contact your RON salesperson or see our website for more information.